As you can see, StarCraft is still a game where large armies battle against large armies. Our upgraded zealots can hold the line here for a short time, but in order to really survive against this many zerglings, we're going to need to bring in some additional firepower. These are the Colossus. They're powerful robotic units that can use their long legs to step up and down cliffs. In addition, they have a powerful beam that sweeps backwards and forwards, able to do large amounts of damage to small swarming units like these Zerglings. This makes the Colossus the ideal support unit for this group of Zealots. have developed many new weapons, the Zerg have continued to evolve. These Zerglings are mutating into Banelings. These small suicidal creatures are filled with explosive chemicals and corrosive acids. Makes the Banelings very potent against zealots that have no defense and even dangerous against the mighty Colossus. You can see our last Colossus here is forced to run, try to get to high ground in order to survive. Colossus is using our new IK system to step up and down this cliff. It's just one example of the new types of technologies we're adding to StarCraft II to make the game more dynamic. Now, while the Colossus is very dangerous against ground targets, it's much more vulnerable to an air counterattack. This swarm of mutalisks will quickly destroy our Colossus and then continue on to attack our base. We'll need to bring in some Phoenix. This is a new Protoss air superiority fighter. It has a special overload ability that allows it to fire its weapon at all nearby enemy forces. Unfortunately, after it overloads, the Phoenix goes offline for a short time. It can't move, it can't fight, and it's helpless against a counterattack. In the hands of a skilled player, the Phoenix can be extremely deadly. If you overload at the right time against the right enemies, you may destroy them all, and there will be no one left to take advantage of your temporary weakness. Time for battle. Understood. We've done a lot of work on our terrain here in StarCraft II. We've got our space platform here, and you can see we've also got a lot of great doodads in this environment, some wonderful texture work. You notice we've got a planet there in our deep sky in the background. There's some asteroids floating in the distance. This is just one example of the types of environments we want to create for StarCraft II. For honor, on the wings of justice. Well, the Phoenix are very powerful against small flyers like Mutalisks. They're much more vulnerable to heavily armed and armored targets like these battle cruisers. They just don't have the firepower to cut through that thick Terran armor. In order to deal with a battle cruiser squadron of this size, we'll need to bring in our warp rays. The warp ray is a specialist Protoss flyer that does additional damage the longer it fires at a single target. This makes the warp ray very potent against heavily armored targets.
same thing that makes the warp ray powerful against battle cruisers also makes it very powerful against enemy structures. You can see this barracks is taking loads of damage and will try to lift off to escape, but it's just not fast enough to get away from the warp ray. All right, you alien freaks. You made your choice. Now you're gonna pay the price. The warp rays are very vulnerable to small units. You can see these marines are coming in and the warp ray is just wasting way too much of his damage firing at a single target. Makes the marines a strong counter for the warp ray. You notice our physics system is in action there. As these warp rays die, their pieces fall down and slide down the ramp a little bit. It's just another example of the types of technologies we're adding to StarCraft II. Now, with our warp rays destroyed, it looks like the Terrans are gonna fortify their position here against us. As we approach the end of our demo here today, there is one last unit we'd like to show you. Now our foes will feel the power of the Protoss. This is the Protoss mothership. It is the ultimate weapon of war in the Protoss arsenal. You are only allowed a single mothership at one time. And each mothership costs a significant number of resources to bring to the field of battle. The mothership has several special abilities that can really make her worth the expense. First of these is the time bomb. This is a special ability that slows down all enemy movement inside the field. You can actually see the missiles slowing down as they try to strike the mothership and stopping just before they strike home. When the field goes off, the missiles fall harmlessly to the ground. This makes the mothership extremely potent against fixed base defenses like these missile turrets. In addition to her time bomb ability, the mothership also has a special attack that she can employ against ground targets. This is the planet cracker. Ordinarily, this would expose your mothership to significant enemy fire. But as you can see, these Marines simply don't have the firepower to punch through that thick Protoss shield. 